guys, those who are experienced, I bet, right? So I bet uh, these topics might be new for you, or if you already knew it, this would be a very, very, very good chance to um, brush ourselves or to remember those initial days, isn't it? Okay, so to start about this, I'll be starting today about this client server architecture. To start with this, guys, um, I would like to ask you one question. Hey, let it be a very interactive session, right? You know, uh, as I told you yesterday, my sessions would be mostly uh, informal sessions. I don't want to be like, you know, one way, uh, one way, right? Okay, so guys, the first question uh, that is, many of us here know what is client and what is server, right? If I ask guys, I I, I am on I am uh, I am an interviewer also. I will I am mostly on interview panel, so I know what are the questions to be asked, uh, especially for freshers and uh, for uh, experienced guys, right? So uh, I know. So when I ask this question for experienced guys and basically for many people, what is client? I get very funny answers. <laughs> So I would like to ask this question to you guys, like what do you think about the client? What is client? Just say, just uh, type here. What do you think? What is client? Any guesses? Whatever you feel, just put it. A requester, excellent. Mm -hmm. How about others? tool which access server systems where the request gets initiated. Excellent, yeah, right. Browser, too good. Who consumes our service? Oh, that's a customer, okay. Excellent, you are on the point, right. So guys, uh, what you said is perfectly fine and right. As we are talking about here, uh, yeah, who need our service, okay. <laughs> okay, who need our service, we call it as uh, client. Okay, so the funniest answer that I got in my one of our interview, like right, you know, I asked uh, uh, what is client, and then he started saying that uh, client, you know, client is client. You don't you know, server. What is server? Server is server. We always every day we use server. You know, you don't know sir, server. Server is server. Client is client, right? It is not client is client. It is not server is server, right? It is we have a proper nice definitions about that. So I'll put it very perfect here, like that you will never forget about the client and what is client and what is server. Guys, as we are talking about here related to IT infrastructures and related to the uh, like computer science and everything. So let me put that very straightforward about what is client and what is server. So guys, <clears throat> To give you, mostly my answers would be single line or single word answers, single line answers, right? So let us learn up to the core, very layman's language. Then we'll put all kind of masala and on our definitions, right? First, we need to learn. So guys, client is something which I can say, which is uh, asking. And server, which is giving, isn't it? to be very straightforward, sorry. So let me put it more here. <clears throat> so guys, so, so, so today's topic is about <clears throat> client server architecture. <clears throat> client server architecture. So <clears throat> I'll talk about the client. So let's say we have a client and we have a server here. So I am saying here client is basically which uh, requests a resource which request a client is which request a resource and server is hmm, you know this which respond to that resource 
right? So this would be the finest, finest definition of the client and server. Guys, client meaning, can you tell me one example about the client which we daily uses? Hmm? We daily use one of the client. Browser, WhatsApp, email, Facebook, whatnot. There are many, 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 many clients. Guys, here, so let us take, uh, yeah, excellent, yeah. So let us take the client that we almost use every day for our daily purpose, and, and that is also uh, related to our work, I mean, related to our course. So I would be saying, can I take a browser as a client? Hmm? Yeah, excellent. So browser is a client. So guys, yeah. So this browser, what do you open in the browser, guys? The website, right? You open a website, you open a browser and you type a website, something called google.com. Mm -hmm. And this google.com, guys, this browser will be a client for you. Guys, not only browser, there are anything which is asking, which is requesting a resource. Here, what is a resource? Resource is google.com. Right? Resource is google.com. So here, any client which is asking for a resource, uh, any div uh, so yeah, anything which is asking for a resource, we call it as client. And anything on the other side, okay, if I type google.com in a browser, there should be some other guy on the other end, there should be something on the other end that should be responding to our request, isn't it? Who is that fellow? That is server. And this guy is server. Right, so there should be some. They, this client is which requests a resource, and the server is which respond to that resource. I'm saying that which respond to that resource. So let's say if you're asking a Google.com, and and the server is uh, serving you Facebook.com, is that what you are expecting? No. So the thing is, whatever the client is asking a resource, the server is responding to that same resource. That is client, the client which requests a resource and server which responds to that resource. In a other simple way, I can say that client is which is always asking for something and server which is always giving for that, which is asking from the client. Make sense? Yeah? Yes. Guys, let it be very friendly and then let it be very interactive so that you know I know that you understood very well and so I, I can take it forward. Excellent, thanks for that. All right, so <clears throat> this would be the client and this would be the server. Guys, see here, there will be only one client or only one server? No, we will be having so many servers and so many clients, right, for example, here, um, I took one example as a server. I might have multiple client, multiple servers, and I'll be having multiple clients and all, right? All these things will be in one, a, one thing. What is that? That is called network. Excellent, Sanat. That's called network. Guys, so all these clients and all these servers are communicating with each other and all are interconnected with each other. In simple language, we call it as network. Right? Guys, in network, if you, if you generally ask like in network, uh, and it, hey, can you identify what is client, which one is client and which one is server in the network? Can you identify easily? Is it possible? It's difficult, right? So wait, of course, you know, right? You know the client which is asking, but how do you know that box is asking or giving? We don't know, right? So that's why guys in general, in network, we call it as in network, we call it as devices. What we call it as? We call it as devices. We call it as devices. That devices can be either a client or a server. Remember, all the clients and servers will be inside the network. And it is difficult to identify which box, which machine is a client and which machine is a server. And that is the reason why we call it, a, we call it as devices. 
So that in network we have. Uh, can you tell me? Can you list down what, what what do you have in the network in general? What are your thoughts in network? What do we what do you see? We see routers. We see what firewalls. We see what uh, servers. We see switches. Yes, I am. Uh, we see hubs. We see router IDs. Yes, right. We have so many things. We have so many things. How do we identify this is a client and this is server? Come on. We cannot uh, we cannot put uh, we cannot put our eyes in the machine and the hey you cannot ask hey are you a client or are you server you'll say that get lost so that way we'll say that in general network has devices and that devices can be a client and can be a server you go and check if someone asks like if you interview ask like you know hey uh, what is there inside the network. You started telling about uh, hey in network we have these switches hubs routes and blah 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 blah, right? And in one shot you can say that networks consist of devices and that devices can be either a client or a server. That's a bull like no bullseye short answer. And he will be curious to uh, to you know get in uh, to ask you like hey what is client and what is server? Then you say that client is which request a resource and server is which respond to that resource. And he might ask, what is resource? Resource can be anything. It can be a data, it can be a website, it can be what not, it means what not, right? From your laptop, whatever you are accessing, everything is, if it is going out, then you are asking for something. That would be the client, right? And then there should be a other person on the other end who will be responding to that request? For example, here you are asking for google.com. Who is giving Google page to you? Hmm? Who is giving Google page to you? Server. Where is that server? In Google company. If you are asking, if you are accessing, um, uh, if you are accessing yahoo.com, it goes to Yahoo company because they have the Yahoo servers. And if you're asking Facebook, if you're accessing Facebook client, right? And it is going to the other person where like, you know, of course uh, the, the exact body service provider where like, you know, who is providing the service. Isn't it? So guys, so that is client and this is this is server here. So the client simple as I remember guys, uh, because I have asked uh, uh, this question for the experienced guys also, they always say, so, hey, we deal with the clients and server every day. But if you suddenly ask what is client and what is server, they'll say server is server, client is client, right? It's not that. So, and guys, remember for experienced guys, if someone you are junior in your team member come and ask to you what is client and you cannot say that hey this machine is client no you should be asked telling them that client is which request a resource and server is which respond to that resource and everything will be inside the network everything will be inside the network in network we have devices and then that devices can be either client or either can be a server guys is this clear so i have a habit of uh, mm, saying that uh, uh, clear meaning CC, cluster clear. So most of my batches say CC. CC meaning, sir, cluster clear, CC. So if I ask clear, then you put CC. Great. So this is basically, guys, what is client and what is server. Thank you, Mohan. Thank you, Nathan. Yeah, everyone, thanks. Okay, so guys, now, I like that, Krish, double CC. All right, so guys, now, let us move a step forward. Let us move a step forward and talk about a little bit more on client server. Uh, client server, guys. We know what is client and we know what is server, right? We know client and what is server. Now we will be learning different types of client server architectures. There are basically, basically three types of client server architectures in general. Since our, since our, right, you know, I'll put it here only, huh? don't mind. There are three types of client server architecture. What are those, yeah? Anyone know about that? Yeah. <laughs> One tire, two tire, and then three tire. Right? Excellent. Excellent. Right? <coughs> One tier, two tier, and three tier. Let us take one by one, 
right? Guys, experience guys, are you able to recollect those days hmm, that we have learned in our starting days, right? So one tire, two tire, and three tire, right? Okay, let us talk about one tire, yeah. So let me take this. One tire architecture. I don't even like to talk about this one tire architecture, honestly, because, <clears throat> sorry, because, we don't use this one tire architecture, man, right? We don't use this one tire architecture, never, right? So no one in our industry at the moment in IT industry, they don't talk about this one tire architecture. So that's the main reason why many people, they will start the sessions with two tire architecture because that even makes sense, but one tire architecture doesn't even make any sense. Let me give a fine example. Okay, so we have a machine. So we have a machine. Hey, by the way, who invented the machine? Hmm? We know that, right? So do you remember in my, I still remember in my childhood days, um, there is a, yeah, Charles Babbage, right? There was a um, photo with one big mission with one person, remember, right? So, so the thing is, yeah, right? Yes, so that guy, I don't know who that why would, might be a Charles Babbage. Or I don't know, right? You know, so, but I still remember there is a big machine and they call it as the first computer, right? And you know how it will act? So you need to give input from one end, right? And then you need to take output on other end. You need to take, okay, you are diverting. Let me stop the video for him. Okay, I helped you. Okay, so guys, do you remember? So you need to that person. You need to, he need to give input on one end, and he need to work on the other end. He need to he that the machine will process that blah blah, 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 blah and then he, that, that machine will give the output, right? So the same way here, guys. <clears throat> if you take one tire architecture, right, everything will be on that same machine. Your client will be on that say on that machine. Your server will be on that mission same mission let's say you have a website yeah you have a website host uh, you have a website on the, your mission if no one able to access from outside is there any use of this let's say okay for, for, let's say uh, you have your own personal computer right or you have your own machine in your company and then it's not connected to <coughs> any network and you have installed uh, uh, like you know server there you know uh, you know in order to have a website you need to have a database also no? i'll talk about that soon huh? right so if you if you put a website there you have to install many things you put everything here in one machine if it is not able to access from the other end if there are no clients from outside if you want to access you need to go inside the machine you need to access the website that meaning you are the only one person who will be accessing that resources is there any use of this these these things in our industry at the moment can you tell me no 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 so so best example would be another example would be the, uh, those who are developers they know this you have a laptop you installed ms sql on your machine you are connecting into that same machine you are creating database on your same machine you are hosting the website on the same machine you are doing everything on your same machine that is for you is this for everyone no that would be is there any use it might be useful for your r and d purpose research and development or or for dev, for you are doing some research and exploring stuff that might be useful is that really helpful in the real world no that you have answered fantastically right so that is one tire so i don't like to talk about this one tire of course i have talked about this but there is no use of this one tire architecture nowadays no Hey, let us go to two tire architecture. <clears throat> two tire architecture. In this architecture, hey, we have <clears throat> client, right? Hey, uh, and then, uh, okay, 
we have a uh, upper we have client and we have server what we did from one tier to two tier right we have separated this client and this server so that meaning hey for example we have a facebook yeah browser there will be only one client or millions of multiple clients many clients many na okay just layman straight forward question will you will so you have hosted your website like let's say facebook he has hosted it his facebook is ready will you able to handle the clients once it is on online no na the clients can be many the clients can be many so we don't talk about the clients so if you have the server ready and the url ready that meaning website ready we don't talk about the clients because once you put that on internet anyone in the world can access it so we don't talk much about the client because once you have the server side ready client will automatically will get in touch to it isn't it so the client the thing is here the clients are many there are many clients there are many clients but let's say we have a server here <clears throat> let's say we have a server okay this is a server all right guys let's say i want to put a website here i want to put a web my application here you know what is application right developer will code you have your java baba uh, python all these things right you dot net and all you develop your own application right so that that application you are putting in the server that application you are putting in this server here hey in order to uh, host a website right in order to put something you need to put that on the server only na right so because someone is asking if the client is asking for that application that will be hitting your server right so application is nothing but the code which the developer has developed guys your application will work just like that or do you need the back end what, what what is required in the back end hmm? what is required in the back end database db right so you have a database we need to install the database on the server oracle db ms sql pool there are many a lot of databases right okay so your application will not just chumma work like that right your application if you put okay you you develop a code that is a folder you put on the web uh, you sorry you put on the server that boom it will not just work right so it has to you need to have a uh actually a web actually a server running behind so what i mean to say is here guys if you want to put something everything you are dumping on the same machine everything you are dumping on the same machine let's say you have application here guys if you put application on the server simply that server is called application server certification question what is application server right so guys if you have a code if you put the code if you put your application on the server simply that server is called application server what is database server if you have a database on the machine that machine is called database server do you agree make sense do you agree right okay what would be your uh, your sample databases many people say that your your mysql you have it ms sql you have it whatever you can install the database and application can be your uh, .net hmm? your java python what not developer will develop the application in any kind of language however whatever he is comfortable with okay so he is putting the application here and definitely he need to have a, a database for that to connect all right and then his url is ready the server and the server has the the url is ready the website is hosted you know url right your uh, http colon slash this Uh, something who is here latest uh, i'll talk ma kumar i'll talk so let's say i'll talk kumar.com example okay now so i have uh, hosted my application i have hosted this database is here guys and then i have my url this is ready okay now client started access this is kumar.com 
in this two tier architecture guys we have only two tier one that is client tier and then server tier how many tiers are there in two tier two tiers what are those client layer and server layer or client tier or server tier we call it as client layer or server layer only two we have it so clients will connect to the server directly clients will be connecting servers to the servers directly okay now is the thing let's say this is the server na this is the server which might be having 4 gb ram for example 4 gb ram and this might be having a uh, mm, uh, cpus as two cpus for example some kind of storage 20 gb hard disk for any machine you have it right right so here guys let's say here and of course this has an this machine has operating system and all right okay now guys interesting question see here i have put my application here and i have put my database here and application need memory in order to run yes or no yes and then database need memory definitely yes let's say this application will say that hey operating system hey machine you have 4 gb ram i need 2 gb in order to run my the application and database guy will say the database also say that hey hey machine i need i need 2 gb also for me to in order to run perfectly and then operating system from the bottom he'll see just like this right so with b guys he'll give a bad expression right saying that hey the machine has only 2 gb ram sorry 4 gb ram you took 2 gb and database took 2 gb what i'll took right what i'll do right so big and guys these three people started fighting with each other if they are fighting with each other what is the effect on this kumar.com bolo hmm? what is the effect on the website if they are fighting with each other <laughs> Sairam, you're right. I S C T Tatkal Tatkal scenario website down. Excellent guys. So server busy, not available. These kind of bullshit will we will get in this kind of scenarios. So the thing is, and and guys, yeah, server will be blast. Right, true. Right, server goes down, server crash and all. I like the responses here. Right, so. guys so the thing is everything application you are putting here database you are putting here and some other thing you are installing it here everything you are putting in a single server just in case if this goes dhamal your website is gone <laughs> board exams also huh? right yeah i hope uh, many people wish for that huh? exam results the site should not be open on that day right so okay now guys another thing another example would be let's say some hacker came some hacker came and he hacked this server he hacked this server your application data is gone your application code is hacked yes or no it is hacked your database as the as this database is also on the same machine the database is also hacked so you have security problem and you have performance problem do you suggest this do you suggest this two tier architecture now by listening all these things yes or no mm. no 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 yes right so so many no's fantastic that meaning guys this is not suggestible again so that's the reason why we have 
another tire called three tire architecture and you see here uh, it is very simple to implement you are right so in general those who are working experience guys you might have no right if you are, if you want to do some poc poc meaning proof of concept so if your manager say something to you like hey um, uh, who is here nimi right so nimi uh, and uh, if he says please english and the both speak oh no no i should not speak hindi right <laughs> right so there are many people that they don't know hindi also right okay so guys uh, let's say uh, let's say one person uh, like you know uh, let's say naresh itself so we have naresh and his manager told that hey naresh can you set up something uh, can you set up a website so first he cannot directly go and hit on the production environment right production environment means meaning where the customer is accessing it right so the thing is he will be doing some testing so that meaning he will take a sample server or a test server and then he'll try to install application there he'll try to put the code there he'll try to put the database there he'll try to put everything there he will he will be using for testing so guys two tier architecture is mostly used for testing purpose is it good for the production environment bolo tell me chepu no so that's a, if you want to do some testing testing is nothing but poc proof of concept that meaning you need to show some proof to your manager na uh, that uh, the concept what you have developed that is called proof of concept right testing right so working uh, no, working Mm, uh, you know thing okay so okay let us conclude this year so two tier architecture is not good for our health or for our environment so that's the reason why we go for the next architecture is three tier architecture and this is the one that we need to talk more let's do it so guys uh, okay can you answer this how many layers you uh, uh, how many uh, how many client server architectures are there three one tier two tier and three tier so which one is is gone like you know it's buried it's dhamal it's right it's gone one tier architecture right and then which one is uh old one next one so in two tier architecture how many layers are there two layers what are those client layer and then server layer what are those client layer and then server layer excellent so in two tier architecture we are dumping it is very simple you are putting all the components in one machine and then you are accessing it and it is not good for it and that's the reason let's go to the three tier architecture and you know in three tier architecture we have three layers one is client layer and we have uh, hmm <coughs> application layer and i'm separating here now data layer data layer at least two or more servers yeah yeah true right so guys in this three tier architecture we have three layers client layer application layer and data layer guys simple as that so client we know that who are connecting to the servers and what is application hey what is application server application server meaning where you have applications installed where your application stored wherever your application have stored or hosted or install so that server is called application server simple as that number 1 and what is database server database server the server which has database installed what is database which stores the data what is that what is a database which stores the data 
you know very well guys uh, we you might have worked on databases also right those who are new for them guys database is like a repository like you know is a place where you store the data and application will go and talk to the database and get the data from the database and application will give the data to the client simple as that your facebook if you open facebook all that is the facebook is an application that is will be the that will that is application and whatever your user id your login your images your what not you are putting everything will be stored in the backend backend is nothing but database so application facebook will grab will fetch the data from the database and he is giving to the client so facebook is an application it's a code which is written that will be in application layer and all your databases will be in your data layer so guys uh, those who are developers i will give you this thing also see here you might have uh, recollected see here this is also known as presentation layer remember those days huh presentation layer this is called business logic layer hmm? remember and this is called database layer guys have you heard about these words remember olden days are you with me hmm? yeah this is very important guys because this is the one see okay so we have so many clients so we don't talk much about the clients here <clears throat> so i'll design like this here yeah we have so many clients these are all the clients that will be there so many people will be connected to my server okay now guys yeah till yeah now we are using that this so guys what is the difference between two tier and three tier so in two tier we have only one server where we have all the components installed but here in three tier we are separating the components we are separating the components so now we have guys here let's say in application server i have one server here right so i have this server and i am separating the database server also so this guy is <clears throat> application server you have your application here and you have your database here this is called your application server guys this is how we need to architect in our uh, cloud or wherever and this is the database server hai na are you with me make sense right so now for example as this is two different uh, separate servers this server might have uh, uh, this server might have 4 gb ram mm, and all and this our server also have 4 gb ram so guys now this application will work aram se like you know this application will work seamlessly nicely because will work super because all the ram memory he this guy can consume it and database can consume his own ram application guy can consume will his own ram is there any fight now between these two hmm? tell me is there any fight so if there is no fight what about our kumar.com the performance will be good or not it will be good see you are also telling it so you are involving it in this topic so that's the reason we are guy why we separate this two thing even though now see here if something hacking happen also if someone hack the application your database is safe if someone hack your database at least your application code is safe of course we can we'll be learning how how uh, uh, the uh how uh, the hacking should not happen we'll be learning in our course right but the thing is here the main concept here is in three tier we are separating the components so that they have their own stuff 
so you have your application here written so guys your application will be in your dot net or your bus called you know, python or uh, your bava right i like to call it as bava right yeah you have a you have a lot so you have you can do it and um, here on database side uh, you can have ms sql server many people know this ms sql mysql what not right so these two guys the client guys see here this is important this is important see so now we have kumar.com which clients are accessing it don't worry about http that will also i'll take a class on it don't worry on that hmm? we have kumar.com okay clients are now hitting kumar.com so that meaning this will go and hit directly to our application server yes or no yes or no guys hmm? yes super so many responses and once you are hitting kumar.com it goes to the application server because you have the application code here and this application will uh, connect to the database server because in the code developer knows this right in the code you have connection string so you need to mention in the application which database you need to connect so you will connect to the database and database give the results back to the such a pathetic line right so database give and this guy this application will give back to the client guys this is basically three tier architecture this is how we need to design hey the thing is here <clears throat> let me give a few uh important thing question certification or oh, not certification it uh interview questions did we learn about application server what is application server yeah what is application server so i'll put like this see the server which has application hosted right is called application server didn't we learn database server what is database server the server which has database install uh, is called database server and also we call it as the server which stores the data is called database server guys do you agree is this clear till here emma it's clear right super super i love that okay now guys how does this guy will identify hey these two are servers hey can i call these two are clients no na application server and database server these two are servers how does this application server knows this guy and this guy knows this guy any hint anyone ip excellent guys in previously we discuss about the clients and server so in the network guys in the network every server every devices will be communicating with each other using ip using ip okay we have our names now i call it as sumit i call it as saura mustaq or nimi right i <coughs> because i am i'm identifying you with the unique name i am identifying you with the unique name so here also in the network guys everything will be network contains devices and devices can be either client or a server and these everything in the network will be communicating using the ip address ip address guys ip address is unique or not ip address is unique or not yes ip addresses are unique and i would like to put this here like you know uh, ip address ip meaning what is the full form of ip internet protocol hmm? ip ip is a 
unique identifier for a device in the network see simple definition remember my principal kiss keep it simple hmm? no no rajiv public ip that is different we'll talk about in aws different kinds of ip address we'll um, squeeze like anything on that right but here for now let's talk about only ip there are different types of ip like public ip private ip elastic ip blah, blah. many we don't talk about all this and let's concentrate on the basic first hmm? guys so here every server have the name also that name we call it as many people will call it as server name or another name hello host name right host name host name is the name of the server ip is guys you can talk to the servers you can talk to the servers either with the host name or with the ip you have two things ip and host name remember these two are very very important in order to take it further to learn further ip meaning it is an unique identifier for which the you know how the ip looks like hmm? for example the ip will be like this hey you know uh, this very too much right? 192.168.10.12 something like this right we will be talking about this ip addresses also in our aws course a lot okay guys the question for you okay i'll put this also here so that you can read later hmm? devices communicate with each other in the network with the ip address or with host name okay fantastic fantastic all right so now now is the tricky question guys ready to answer this all clients are communicating to this application server so that meaning simple as that simple question this application server should be public or private in order to connect from the client the application server should be public or private in order to connect from the client it should be public super it should be public and your database should be public or private private obviously now you understand what is the difference be between public and private yes or no public meaning the, the the public meaning the things which you can communicate from the internet directly is called the public so from the internet if you cannot talk to the server directly that is private we know which one to make it private we know which one to make it public so you say definitely database should be mandatorily in the private network but you also said application should be in the public but is that recommended because we have our code here is that recommended to have our application server to be on uh, public bolo hmm i need more throw up throw up type it yes or no 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 but how we had only three tier 1 2 3 only 3 so this two definitely should be a private the communication but my problem is from the client to the application server i don't want to expose my application server no that's the reason why we the best architecture for this kind of things would be this i will put one more server here i'll put one more server here let me take out all this dingalala stuff hmm? can anyone uh, a uh, guess what server is that it's a web server it's a web server excellent it's a web server guys so web server 
I, I will put this application server still in private and I'll put this very web server in public. So why I put this, why I haven't put application server, uh, why I haven't put this application server to the public because I have important things. I have a very important and critical things on my server like code, data and all. So this web server has anything? Web server doesn't have anything. <laughs> web server doesn't have anything. What it does, it just simply takes requests and redirect to app server, that meaning application server. So what we do is, so now this client will be connecting, this client will be connecting to the, uh, to the this guy, uh, web server. I don't like this. Right, so the clients will be connecting to the web server, and because uh, yeah, only browser. Hmm. Yes, Omid. only browser. So these web server examples would be your, um, as you said, Apache two or um, Nginx. Hmm? Heard about that? So there are many many web servers. So what they do is they take the request, they take the request from the client, and then they just redirect to the application server. So that, so these clients are in public network. Obviously clients are in public and they will be talking to the public web server and from the web server from this would be private again. So guys, yes, Tomcat is a, yeah, that is an application here. You, you have to hit here. So if you have Java, you need to install Tomcat server. There, we will see that Manoj, huh? J boss. Yeah, true, Rajiv. Guys, so now how many layers are there? Bolo? Now how many layers are there, yeah? Three or four? Now we can see, sir, what sir, you told only three. Huh? You told the client layer, application layer, <laughs> data layer. Now we have another. So what layer is this sir? And what oh, do you set three and now it is four? So that's why guys, it's up to us. And that is why we call it as super china. So we call it as entire. So we have something called entire architecture. So based on your requirement, based on your uh, uh, security stuff, so you can put any anything in between. And this is the architecture that we are gonna implement in our AWS cloud. But don't worry guys, those who are new, new this is today is only the first class. I have been talk about anything about the cloud or anything about this except today's class. Because guys, I want you to be strong in the basics. If you are strong in the basics, so basic is not like ABCD. See, see how much you have it. So I hope, I hope these are all for few people. These are new for experienced people. This is a very good. Uh, I, I I still believe that most of you, uh, like you might know, but you cannot express what is that on the on the table. So guys, so these client side we don't talk much. So. In our AWS, this from here to here is the one that we will be architecting. This is called three tier architecture or entire architecture. This is how we need to do it. Is this clear, guys? Is this clear? CC? Super. How about others? There are many people here. Sorrow, yes, these guns are very much helpful. Yeah, right. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Guys, this, this is how we go. This is how we go on the AWS. So you will be mesmerizing. So the thing is here, guys, here, I will be, yeah, I will be taking you step by step, step by step, step by step, right? So you cannot directly walk now after you burn, right? First, you will crawl, you will sit, you will do that, this, right? I'll be taking you like a baby steps. 
right? So from zero to hero, right? So that's the reason. So if I directly go and jump on, hey, cloud, hey, cloud is AWS, this is service provider, this is infrastructure, this boom, 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 boom. What? So those are experienced guys, they might be, they might catch a bit for them also it will be difficult if I talk about uh, the cloud on the first day. So that's why, that's the reason I don't talk about the cloud. So I'll be first clearing the basics. Guys, I hope, I definitely believe that you understood all these things. Uh, uh, sir, after so many days I listen to your voice. Uh, Mohan, really? 